And I believe last time, last last time I was here, I finished five minutes up. So 40 minutes, I preached for 40 minutes, but I, I'm going to try my best not to do that again. And for those who are wondering what I'm wearing today, I'm, I'm wearing a, a Filipino uh, formal attire. And uh, we call it in my language, barong or barong. Uh, that's how we pronounced it. So some of the guys are, if, you, if you've been to the Philippines, I believe you've seen this uh, Filipino nor, uh, very formal attire. And we wear it for weddings, for funerals, for church services. And as you know, for those who know, my, my country is a tropical country. And this is very, very, um, you know, comfortable in a tropical country. And that's why I decided to wear this this morning. It's because it's summer here in the U.S. But uh, the Lord's been good. I'm on my summer vacation right now. And during the fourth week of July, I mean, fourth, fourth of July, fourth of July week, I was with a friend in Maryland, and they treated us for a ticket in sight and sound. And we went to uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and we watched uh, Moses. And it was very good, very, very good. And uh, during the break, I made sure that they were following the scriptures, and I read Exodus. But of course, they are, they are not that accurate, but still, it is a very good play. And I thought those actors really played their role very well. And, uh, you know, and I've, and, and I've even seen the, the animals, the camels, the horses, and the um, goats and sheep. And I thought, these animals are better actors than me. You know, and I thought these animals really did their roles, and these people, these actors, really did their roles, their roles very well. And speaking of roles, we'll be on John chapter 1. Speaking of roles, we're going to look at what is the role of John the Baptist? What is the resp responsibility, his role that he has fulfilled for the Lord? And while thinking about that, while looking on the testimony of John the Baptist, I want us, I want you, the church today, to think about what is your role in the church? What is your responsibility? What is this thing that you are responsible of that you need to do in the body of Christ? What are you doing for the church, for the Lord, as, the, as part of the body of Christ, as the bride of Christ? And as you know, folks, and I agree with Spurgeon when he said that the church is the dearest place on earth because this is the bride of Christ. This is the very most important association that we have now that is existing in this world. And I believe that all of us, you and I, as part of the body of Christ, has a role and we need to be responsible on doing those roles for the Lord in the body of Christ. John chapter 1, we're going to look at the testimony of John the Baptist, and we're going to start in John chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible says, and I'm reading in King James Version, but you don't, it's okay, you can read in your own versions, and that's all right. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, John the Baptist. And the Gospel of John, by the way, was written not by John the Baptist, but by John the Apostle. John the Beloved, or John the Revelator. And these two people are two different people, persons. John the Beloved and John the Baptist are two different persons. Here is John the Baptist. He said in verse, uh, John the Beloved said about John the Baptist, there was a man, man whose name was John. Uh, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness. John the Baptist came for a witness to bear witness of the light. What light? The light of Christ, Jesus, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light. John the Baptist was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light, to bear witness of the light of Christ. And this morning, as I said earlier, we're going to look at how did John the Baptist fulfill this role as the one who bore, who bears witness of the light, as the one, as what the Word of God says, the one who prepared the way of the Lord. Before Jesus started his ministry, 
earthly ministry in this world, in this, on the earth, John the Baptist was the one, the, the man who was preparing the way of the Lord, preparing his people to understand that there is a man coming who is greater than him, greater than John the Baptist. And uh, before we go and study the Word of God, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, once again may come before you the only true living God. You are the righteous, holy, you all know things, you are the all-knowing God, all-powerful, you are the creator of all things, and you are our God. And thank you, God, that even though you are the most high God, Lord, we can call unto you our Father. And thank you, Lord, because you are a Father who loves his children, and let us, by his sovereignty, to understand your word, to be able to read it freely. God, thank you. And this morning, Lord, I pray that you help us with the guidance of the Holy Spirit indwelling within us, Lord, I pray that you help us to understand your word and see the message from it and see the richness of your word. And if there is someone here, God, who is lost, Lord, draw that person to yourself according to your will, that they may respond to the gospel and trust your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as their Savior. God, we give you all the glory because you alone deserve it. And I pray, God, that you help us help this servant of yours. Give me the words coming from you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. John the Baptist, the prophet of the highest, the one that cries in the wilderness, or the forerunner of the Messiah, the Word of God says that the Lord's hand is with him. It was mentioned that he will be filled with the Holy Ghost. It, that, that he shall be great before the sight of the Lord. In Luke chapter 1, verse 15, this was the prophecy of his father, Zechariah. It says here, For ye shall be great, John the Baptist, shall be great in the sight of the Lord. And this was even before John the Baptist was born. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And that verse implies that John the Baptist has a very special ministry and he is a very special person. And, it's in, and that there, there's a portion that says, And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall not drink wine or a strong drink. And that's, that, that implies and that says that he will be a Nazarite. Nazarite. What is a Nazarite? Well, a Nazarite is different from a Nazarene. Jesus is, Jesus is called Jesus of Nazareth because he's from Nazareth. He's a Nazarene. But that's different from being a Nazarite. Nazarite is a vow. And that was given in Numbers chapter 6 by God. And he says there, if anybody wants to serve the Lord, to serve me, he needs to take the Nazarite vow. And if you have your own time in your, in your own houses, you can read the chapter 6 of Numbers. But <clears throat> there are three main external principles in the Nazarite vow. Number one, you cannot drink or eat anything that is of grape. You cannot drink the wine or the fruit, neither fresh or, or dried. The second one, you cannot cut your hair. You're not allowed to harm your hair, cut your hair. And the third one, you're not allowed to come near a dead body. And it even says there in that chapter that even though your brother or sister or your mother or your father died, any, anybody from your relatives died, you're not allowed to go near that dead corpse, that dead body, because you will be defiled. Because the principle there is you need to be consecrated. You, you need to be holy so you can serve the Lord. That is the Nazarite vow. And usually, the Nazarite vow is voluntary. It's not commanded. If you want to serve the Lord, you can volunteer to take the vow. You're not commanded. You're not required to take the vow. And only three people were unique in their vows. Samuel and Samson in the Old Testament, where they were presented by their mothers, by their parents. And here, John the Baptist is unique, special in, in his vow, because he was commanded by God, prophesied that he will be a Nazarite. But folks, I said all these things to, to tell you this, that if you are desiring to serve God, 
Of course, you need to consecrate yourself. You need to be holy. You need to be righteous before God so you could serve God. But, of course, not by taking the Nazarite vow. I don't want to see you living in the wilderness of Pennsylvania with long hair, eating locust and honey because you want to serve the Lord. No, that is not applicable to you and I. That is not applicable to the church. But what is the principle from the Word of God? Romans chapter 12, notice what Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, consecrated, set apart, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That is the principle of the Word of God to the church. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That is the principle from the Word of God. That today, for the church, if you want to serve the Lord, you don't have to take the Nazarite vow. You don't have to let your hair grow and be a, an extrovert, an introvert, antisocial person and uh, live in the wilderness by yourself and eating locust and honey. No, you don't have to do that. If you want to serve the Lord, just be holy and present your bodies as a living sacrifice. And being holy is a gift from God. Only God can make you holy, by the way. And you are renewed day by day by the Scriptures. As the Word of God says, sanctify them in, in, the, in thy truth, and thy word is truth. And we sanctify ourselves through the Word of God. And of course, by not sinning, consecrated. That is the principle of the Word of God. Now, let's go to the points here. How did John the Baptist fulfill his role for the Lord Jesus Christ? How did he fulfill his role as the one who prepares the way of the Lord? And this also shows that each and every one of us, which is the application in the body of Christ, that we have respective roles that we need to fulfill, responsibilities that need to be done. Number one, this is how John the Baptist fulfilled his role. He bore witness of the light of Christ. In verse 7, it says, it says there, the same came for a witness. John the Baptist came to be a witness, to bear witness of the light, the light of Christ that all men through him might believe. Folks, this shows that during the time when John the Baptist came, there was great darkness enveloping the world. In verse 5, it says there, And the light shineth in darkness. Jesus', li Jesus light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. It wasn't overcome by darkness. Because we need to understand that during the time when John the Baptist came, and was sent from God, there was great darkness enveloping the world. If you think that the world is dark right now, I believe they had a darker world. You know why? Because now, today, we have the Word of God. During their time, folks, they, only have the, they don't have the full Bible. And during that time, for 400 years, there was a dark, silent period meaning God hasn't spoken to anybody for 400 years. He hasn't sent any prophet to tell his people what his message was for 400 years. So for 400 years, folks, these people were lost, living in darkness. And that's how John the Baptist came. It was very dark in the world. And notice what the last chapter of Malachi said in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5. It says there in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, that's the last book in your Old Testament. It says there, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with, curse, with a curse. And then in Luke chapter 1, verse 17, let's jump on Luke chapter 1, verse 17. It says here, And he shall go, John the Baptist shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the way of the Lord. 
This only shows that John the Baptist was a type of Elijah. He was not Elijah, though he was not Elijah, as he clearly denied in verse 21, but he was a type of Elijah. He was a type of Elijah because he was bold in his preaching. Remember, Elijah, because of his boldness in his preaching, he was persecuted by Queen Jezebel. He was persecuted and he, he ran for his life. And so John the Baptist is a type of Elijah because he was bold in his preaching. That is why the, the, the priests and the Levites ask him, Are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? In verse 21, it says there, And they ask him, John the Baptist, What then? Are, art thou Elias? Are you Elijah? And he said to them, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. He is not Elijah, but in a way, he fulfilled that prophecy in Malachi that someone will be sent to prepare the way of the Lord. And he, he fulfilled this role by bearing witness to the light, that the light, to the world, that the light had come into the world. That's how he fulfilled his responsibility. And he preached about repentance for the remission of sin. Remission, meaning forgiveness of sins. In Mark chapter 1, verse 4, Luke 3, 3, Acts 19, 3 to 4, it says there that John the Baptist preached about the remission, meaning the forgiveness of sin. He was basically preaching to his people, to the Jews, and telling them, repent of your sins, turn away from your sins, from your idols, and our God is rich in tender mercy to forgive you. That was his message. That God has deep compassion for His people such that he, he demonstrates goodness to you, to those who are in miserable condition, even though you don't deserve it, even though we don't deserve it. We never deserve, we, we've never deserved the mercy of God because we are rebels, we were the enemies of God. But still, He's telling them to His people, and not only them, I believe to us too, the church today that if you will repent of your sins God is rich in his tender mercy to forgive you to forgive you and cleanse you from all your sins his father Zechariah prophesied that he will lead his people to the way of peace in Luke chapter 1 verse 76 to 77 it says there and thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remissions of their sins, by the forgiveness of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day, the day spring from on high hath visited us. And verse 79, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. That was the prophecy of his father Zechariah, about John the Baptist when he was still in his mother's womb. And this is exactly what John the Baptist did. While bearing the light of Christ on one hand and telling his people, hey, come, repent, turn away from your sins, turn away from your idols. And at the end of the road, he sees Jesus and tells them, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And you know, the Jews were very familiar with that very familiar with the word lamb because every year they sacrifice millions of lambs for their sins to be covered in the Old Testament. And then when they heard that Jesus is the Lamb of God, John the Baptist said, which taketh away the sin of the world. The lamb who usually covers just the sin that you have done for the past year, and now here is Jesus, the Lamb of God, that takes away not just simply covers, but takes away. And he's telling them, here is the lamb, the one that will take all your sin, not just cover it for the, for the whole year that you have done, but take it away from you. That was the message of John the Baptist. And as what the Word of God says, he will turn his people to the way of peace. He was telling them, come, follow me. Here is the way of peace. Jesus, the only way for true peace. Folks, think about this. These people, the Jews, during their time were under the rule of, a, of an emperor, of a world emperor. They had no peace. 
Imagine America under the rule of Russia. You won't like that. You won't have peace. And these people, they were under a dictatorial monarch. They had no peace. I believe that they feared for their lives every day. If they do not submit, they will be treated as rebels, treasonous people. They had no peace. But here is John the Baptist, the man sent by divine authority from God, guiding them with the light on his hand, the one, Jesus, light, till they see Jesus. And he goes on and says, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. He was telling them, Here is the source of peace. Here is the source of your salvation. Even though the Jews understood at first that they will be saved from the rule of the Roman Empire, but John is telling them way deeper than that, that they, will, they can be saved not only from the rule of a dictatorial monarch, but they can be saved from the slavery of their sins. Notice what Jesus said to his disciples in John 14, 27. He said, Peace, I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. What does, it, what does this tell us? This verse shows that we can only attain true, genuine peace through Jesus. He is the only source of true peace. If you are afraid today about something or anything, friend, take the peace that Jesus is freely offering. Rest in him. Let him feel that emptiness in your heart. Take away that fear. You can only attain true peace, true peace, by trusting in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a saying, if you start fearing God, you will fear nothing anymore. Not only that, but this is the second one, how John the Baptist fulfilled his role for the Lord. He bore witness of the dev divinity of Christ, the deity of Christ. In verse 15, it says there, John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he, Jesus, of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. John the Baptist is basically telling them that Jesus is eternal. You know what? Technically speaking, John the Baptist is six months older than the Lord, than Jesus Christ. They were half, half cousins. But he was telling these people, hey, this man is before me. What is he trying to tell them? Theology proper. Telling them that Jesus is eternal. Telling them that Jesus has been existing even before the foundation of the world. Because Jesus is the one who created the world, as what clearly says here in the chapter 1 of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 3, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Talking about Jesus. And not only that, in Colossians 1, 16, it says there, For by Him all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principles or powers, all things were created by him, by Jesus, and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. It's technically, basically telling us, John the Baptist telling his people that Jesus is eternal. He said, this was he of whom I speak, he preached a lot about Jesus. And even though it is not mentioned in the scriptures how long the preaching ministry of John the Baptist was, some believe that it was between 3 to 30 months. Well, I personally believe that there was a quite span of time because his ministry was very significant, very important, because he was the one who prepared the way of the Lord. But anyhow, John the Baptist preached a lot about Jesus. Jesus was his main message. Christ was his main message. He was remarkable as a preacher, and he was also extremely popular as a preacher. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 5, it says there, All Judea came. Of course, that, that is a hyperbole. Uh, the Word of God is not telling us that even though people were sick or tired, or they did not come. Everyone that in their houses came to hear him. No, but almost, I believe generally, general of the population came to listen to this prophet that was sent from God. 
because he was very remarkable. And they, they, they knew that after 400 years, God hasn't spoken to anybody. And then here is John the Baptist, the man sent from God. And he was talking about, not about himself, but Jesus. Because he understood that we, what he need to talk about is not who he is or, or what his background was, but to talk about what God is and who Jesus was. Jesus was his main message. And even though he was not in a prime location, not in the city, not where the crowd was, he was still used greatly by God. And let me tell you this, folks, this church is your church. And God, by his sovereignty, this is the place where he set you down. And this is the perfect place for you to serve him, for you to serve God. Think about that. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip this part for those who preach us, and I be, maybe some of you preach us here, but just this part that I will read for you, for those who preach. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17, Paul said, But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. May we boast of Christ and not ourselves. May we understand that the, the great one was the one who sent and not the one who was sent. John the Baptist was great, but it doesn't end there. He's not that great at all because the one who's great was God that sent him to prepare the way of the Lord, the way of Jesus. Folks, may we worship God and not people. Sometimes we, uh, theologians said that the heart is the factory of idols. Sometimes we make ourselves or men idols. May we worship God and not ourselves. May we worship God and not those who are great in preaching. I know you have heard people who are very great in preaching, very good in preaching, but they are just imperfect people just doing what their roles are, which is to serve you the word of God. May we give the glory to God and not to men. And that is my goal here, for you to worship the living God, to exhort you, to tell you, worship God, and make worship a manner of your living. John the Baptist bear record that Jesus was the Son of God in verse 34 to 35, and you can read it in your own time. In verse 35, actually, I'm going to read it again. The next day after John stood and the two of disciples, in verse 36, and looking upon Jesus as he walked and saith, Behold the Lamb of God. This is the second time now. The first one was before a crowd, and now the second time was before his two disciples. And his disciples, as clearly says here on the next verses, it's Andrew and John, the Beloved. And he told them, Behold the Lamb of God. And these two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. And this should be the goal for us Christians. We should cause people to see the Lamb of God and cause them to follow him. That is our role as Christians. Generally, that is our role. You can see how much the world need Jesus today. And our role is to tell them there is a man, a man, God, that was sent to die for your sins, the only one who can take away your sins and forgive you of your sins. And we need that, folks. We need more people telling people, other people, that they need Jesus. And this should be our goal, telling people, here is the Lamb of God. Here is Jesus that can take away your sin. And that is how John the Baptist fulfilled his role for the Lord. And I have five minutes, and I'll, I'm, I'm sure that I will be done in five minutes. And let me end with these few things. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says there, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Today, folks, the church... It's not the same as John the Baptist. We do not prepare the way of the Lord, but rather, what do we do? We tell people the way of peace. Who is the way of peace? In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
we can lead lost people to the way by preaching them the gospel of Christ. What is the gospel? That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried for three days, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel that these people need, and we need to show them the way. John preached about the forgiveness of sins while looking forward to the cross, while us, we preach about the forgiveness of sins while looking backward 2,000 years ago to the cross when Jesus died for us. Folks, again, this is my question. What is your role in the church? Are you fulfilling it? Are you doing it? John the Baptist's role was to prepare the way of the Lord, and he did it. Of course, the church wasn't existing yet that time, but now that it exists for 2,000 years now, what is your role in the body of Christ? And I hope no matter what it may be, I hope that we'll be able to fulfill it. Amen? We are created and we were saved by God, not just to consume and enjoy. Think about that. We're not here in this world just to consume and enjoy. Consuming and enjoy is good. Good food, you know, sleeping well, resting, enjoying the things that you work hard for. That is good, but we are not created not just to consume and enjoy. We have roles, and that is to fear God. And what, what, This is what the preacher said in Ecclesiastes, to fear God and keep His commandments. We need to follow the Lord. We need to keep His commandments. And basically, the Word of God says to serve God, to worship God, to live your life for the Lord. Maybe you will say, well, my only role in this church is to listen. Well, that is good. That is a good role. Listening, listening. Some, because some people doesn't listen. I don't listen, you know, every, uh, at all times. But listening is a very good role. And this is the responsibility of a listener. Number one, we should be personally ready. Meaning, make the message personal to you. Listen with conviction and transformation. Make the message, hey, this is for me. This is what the Word of God says. Not only that, we should be physically ready. People do not listen well when they are tired and hungry, right? All you think about is the food you're going to eat after church or which restaurant are you going to after the service. And let me rephrase that. People do not listen well when they don't take or drink their coffee in the morning. Take your caffeine and be awake during the service so that you would be, be able to listen and think about the Word of God. Think about God, who He is, what God is in His communicable attributes. And not only that, be prayerfully ready. Two things that you need to pray for every time. Pray for yourself that, you know, you will be ready to accept the Word of God. And the number two is pray for the preacher as he communicates God's message. Folks, that is our responsibility in the church as listeners. And maybe, again, last one, you'll say, well, I'm old, I'm, I don't have the energy anymore, I'm 80 years old, and I can't run anymore, I can't, do, I can't clean the church anymore, or do all these things that I need to do in the church with energy. With, well, we understand, and we don't want to set that aside and just to... Don't think about it. We understand, people. You are old. I'm sorry for repeating that word, but, but that is the reality. That is a fact. But you know what the Word of God says in Titus? Paul said to the aged man and to the aged woman, what is your role in the church? Teach the young people. Tell them what they need to do in this life. Folks, I am only 26 years old. I am a foolish boy and I'm still emotional, and my decisions, I would say, are not fully wise. And you are more experienced than me, and your children and your youth here, they need you, they need your wisdom and experience to tell them, hey, this is the best thing that you can do for the Lord. Hey, this is the best decision that you can do for the Lord. We need you, we need old folks to tell us what is the right decision the wisest decision that we can make to teach us how to drive and all that stuff. Hey, folks, my message here for you today is that 
You all have roles. What is your role in the church? Think about your role and fulfill it, amen? Ful- fulfill it for the Lord. Fulfill your responsibility for the Lord. If you don't have any responsibility or role in the church, look for it. Serve God. Serve God. Serve the living God. Father, we come before you this morning. We want to thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace and mercy, tender mercy that you've given to us that now we are able to serve you, the living God. Who are we, Lord, to serve the creator of all things? God, we thank you and we give you all the glory because this this was all according to your plan. And thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. And I pray, God, for abundant life. Baptist Church, may you be with them. God, may you help them meet their needs according to your will and that they may serve you and love you more and understand you more as our God and as our Savior. Thank you so much, Lord. We give you all the glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you.